Brothers and sisters, welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. Let's continue our fascinating discussion in the Dao workshop. One of the things I've heard someone say is that Muhammad was a time traveler. Yeah, a time traveler. He used to travel in time. How did he know the information, the scientific facts? Because he traveled in time. The funny thing was, the person who said this was a policeman, a senior policeman in UK. Which gets you worried, right? If that's, if that's what your police are ready to say, you're going to get a bit worried, right? Who committed this crime? It was a time traveler, right? That's my explanation. I mean, can you imagine, right? This is a policeman. Would you accept this in a court of law? Could he put this forward as any serious proposition, as a report in a police report? This crime happened. The only reason we can explain is the thieves must have been time travelers. And the funny thing was, is that the night before he said this, he'd been watching a movie, right, Back to the Future, which is about, the point here is, here is someone who just doesn't want to admit the facts. That's the reality. That's clear and obvious. This is not really a rational explanation. The other thing that people have suggested, and this possibly may become more and more popular, especially if you watch certain videos, aliens. Right? Aliens from outer space brought this knowledge to the Prophet Muhammad. Okay, this has two problems. Actually, this still goes back to our three alternatives. Was he a liar? Was he speaking the truth or was he deluded? This is another form of delusion. It's another form of delusion. Or it's another form of being deceived. So it's not really any different from the case of being inspired by the devil or being talked to by aliens, right? There are still major problems with posing an idea like that. First of all, the vast majority of people simply don't accept that aliens really exist. I personally don't believe there is any really convincing evidence that aliens exist. Most of what people talk about in terms of UFOs, almost all of them have viable alternative explanations. And one of the interesting things is, is that often sightings of UFOs, of extraordinary flying objects, happen at the moment when new technology is being developed. So it's interesting that, for example, at a certain time in human history, people were seeing flying objects very similar in description to zeppelins. But the existence of zeppelins was not known. It's very likely that the military are testing new technology that is not known to people normally. However, that technology appears in the eyes of people who are not used to it as being super advanced. However, I'm not discounting the possibility that aliens do exist. I don't believe that the Quran says one way or another and of course Allah is Rabbil Alameen so the possibility of it being existing other creatures is possible anyway I don't want to get into it I have some theological issues or some Aqidah issues as well with the existence of intelligent life and its implications from the point of view of Aqidah but this is not the time to go into it as much fun and as interesting as you may find this discussion this is not our particular time for it. However, it still leaves a few questions like, number one, why would aliens tell people to believe that there is one God and to worship Him? Why? How would aliens know about, even if they had knowledge and they had information of science and so on, it's possible, obviously, that would be an explanation, but how would they have knowledge of the future? How would they know that certain events are going to take place? For example, that such and such companion would die in such and such place. Or that such and such companion of the Prophet would wear the jewels of the Persian Emperor, as the Prophet predicted would happen. How would the aliens know about a whole series of things that the Prophet Muhammad predicted, some of these things in great detail that have happened in human history and we see them unfolding until today. There's not really a viable explanation for that. 
So even if that was a possibility, we dismiss it as being very unlikely. And it still goes to the position that, that somehow the Prophet Muhammad was deluded. And we've already seen that he did not behave in the manner of a deluded person. And we could, if we had to go into this in more and more detail, the point being here is when you read the seerah and when you read the life of the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him. What you find is a consistent profile of a particular personality. And that consistent profile of that personality is not the profile of someone who is deluded and confused in this particular regard. So any more fanciful explanations that people might come up with? So that's pretty much it. So Alhamdulillah, we've covered many of the objections that people may bring up in respect to the information that we have presented to them, rational reasons why they should believe that the Qur'an is from Allah, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. If you'd like more in-depth information on a lot of this discussion that we've had in Gorat, as I've already referred you, you could look to my series, The Proof That Islam Is The Truth. So, especially in terms of prophecies, the things the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prophesied, the witnessing of the people of the book, there's many things the Prophet Muhammad mentioned in the Bible. There's many things that we didn't cover in this. We didn't introduce it in Go Rap. But it's all useful information and it's all usable information depending on who you're talking to and when you're talking to them. Now, the next thing we want to move on to, inshallah, is there's one other contention people often come up with. I don't follow organized religion. They could say to you, okay, this makes sense, right? I believe there's a God. I can even believe your Quran is from God, but I don't like organized religion. So what can we say to that? I don't like organized religion. If someone says to you, I don't like organized religion. Yes, Salim, what would you say? That means he's rejecting the whole thing altogether. It's fine, but I don't like organized religion. Why do we need an organized religion? I can just be a good person, worship God any way that I want. Yeah, but that means that he did not understand Gorab very well. Okay. Because if he understood the Quran... So what would you say to him in terms of trying to reinforce... We can say that the organized, organized... Uh, yeah, I say, look, that all makes sense, fine. There's a God, Muhammad is the prophet of God, the Quran is from God, but I don't want to follow organized religion. I don't need it in my life. I don't like organized religion. I don't want to follow an organized religion. I just have my own spirituality and... You know, I just pick and choose. I'll take a bit of Islam, I'll take a bit of Buddhism, I'll take a bit of everything and just do whatever I you know, think is right. Then there's something called believe in action. That is not in the sink then. Because if you don't believe, then you don't... I do act. believe. I believe there's a God. I can accept that Muhammad's a prophet of God. I can accept the Quran is from God. No problem. But you know, there's other ways, other insights that gurus and saints and pious people and philosophers have had and I should combine that all and you know I follow what I think I need to in my life. If you believe that Quran is from God then whatever you're saying now is not in alignment with what is there in the Quran. It's in contradiction what you're saying. So if you believe that the Quran is the word of God so then you you follow that. Okay. Yeah. I try to give a logical explanation, but I don't know how correct that is. Fine. Supposing I tell them you are a policeman and you have a commissioner of police and you say, yes, sir, sir, commissioner, sir, we agree that you're the commissioner, but we won't follow the rules and regulations of the department. Yeah. Will he keep you in the department or will he fire you? Similarly, you, this is... Depends God's how good a cop you are and how many criminals you catch. <laughs> You see, they have, the, they have this, too many movies of these rogue cops, you understand? You know, they, yeah, I know these are the rules, but, you know, we're going to break the rules because, you know, we want to catch the bad guys, right? You know, so, you understand? Yeah, but he still has to agree to the rules, whether he follows it or not. Yeah. Right? So, similarly, this is, God's created you. This is God's earth. You yeah. belong to God. Everything belongs to God. It's his air, his water, everything. So, his rules you have to... Or how about more, you know, for example... If you work for a company, right, and the boss pays you and he wants you to do a certain job and he gives you a job description and you say you need to do A, B, C, D and you say, you know, I want to be paid, 
but I just want to do what I feel like. And the boss is not going to accept that. He's not going to accept that you just do what you feel like. You have to follow his instructions. You have to follow the guidelines. So yeah, you're right. Any type of example. You see, I think the thing is what we need to think about is exactly these type of things. Things that make a lot of sense. They're common sense, right? The person is going to find it very hard to come up with any sort of argument against that, right? You know, another thing that Kamal al makki said, he said his comeback is, so what do you want? Disorganized religion? If you don't want organized religion, what do you want? Disorganized religion? The other point is what the whole purpose of religion is it's supposed to be organized. Brothers and sisters, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back soon, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to this really interesting discussion here in Dawa Workshop. You see, I think the thing is what we need to think about is exactly these type of things. Things that make a lot of sense, they're common sense, right? The person is going to find it very hard to come up with any sort of argument against that, right? You know, another thing that Kamal al makki said, he said his comeback is, so what do you want? Disorganized religion? If you don't want organized religion, what do you want? Disorganized religion? The other point is what the whole purpose of religion is it's supposed to be organized. There, there is no such thing as disorganized religion in the sense that the whole purpose of religion is to organize your spiritual life. It's to have spiritual discipline. There's a, a reason behind that discipline. So ultimately, again, it, I mean, it goes back to what Salim is saying is that, wait a minute. The creator of the heavens and the earth is saying, you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do this. And you're saying, I don't think I do. I can do what I want. So really what you're saying is you know better than God. That's what you're really saying. God is telling you what you need to do, but you think you know better than God. Then like you said, Salim, you don't really believe in God. You don't really believe God's the all-knowing. Maybe you think you're the all-knowing. You can't be a Muslim and think you know better than God. So the whole raison d'etre of this whole discussion we've had is that God knows and you don't know. And he is wise and you are not. So logic commands and dictates that you should submit your reason to God's wisdom. Because his wisdom is much greater than whatever your reason can come up with. Right? Okay, yes. Ashur, what have you got for us? I would ask him that, are you an organized person? Yeah. So, when you believe that Islam is an organized religion, that means you are contradicting yourself. Yeah. I mean, you can say that, but the point being here is that there is a difference between, you see, he would say, I'm organized, but I choose to be organized. And if one day I want to be disorganized and I just want to do nothing, and I can do that as well, right? You understand? So, when you ask him a question like that, you're connecting to an internal aspect so that he's decided about his own behavior. But if you use the example like Arashi said, if you're working in the police, or I said if you're working for a company and the boss pays you, right, then the connection is between your behavior and an external, external chain of command, right? The boss who pays your wages, Allah who feeds you and clothes you and gives you air, and who's going to give you Jannah or Hellfire, depending on how you behave, right? So I think that example connects more, right, with the condition that we're describing. Whereas you're saying, are you organized yourself? I mean, to tell you the truth, me, for example, I'm really disorganized. I'm more organized in my religious life than my normal life. My normal life is probably... Alhamdulillah, only organized because, alhamdulillah, Allah has given me, you know, organization in respect to my deen. Otherwise, I'm personally really disorganized. That's my opinion. It may work for you. You can try and see. But in my opinion, I don't think that that's as powerful. Right. So, alhamdulillah, now, brothers, what we want to talk about, we've talked about, alhamdulillah, up until the shahada, the person has taken the shahada. 
They said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. Now what? Is that the end of it? What do you think? Okay, brothers. Now that someone has taken the shahada, is that the end of the story? Are we finished now? Huh? Okay, it's a new beginning. So let me give you an example. Has anyone got kids? Hands up if you're married, please. Have you got kids? Have you got kids, brother? Yeah? Okay, let me ask you a question. Your first child, what's the name of your first child? When Abdullah was born, what did you do when he was born? Did you just, you know, and the nurse cut his cord and then washed him and then what did you just leave him for five days? No. We just put him in a basket and throw him in the river. Say, bye Abdullah. Bye. Nice knowing you for five minutes. Half an hour. Is that what you do with a new baby? No. That's what people do with new Muslims. Right? I mean, this is someone who has now just come to Islam. They are like a new baby. They've accepted this truth, but now they have come into a whole entirely different new world. Right? Literally, you have to imagine. They have come from one world to another world. They have come from a world where they are a soldier of shaitan, whether they know it or not. Because everyone who is not following Islam correctly is from Hizb shaitan whether they accept it or know it or not. I mean, most people don't even know it. Not intentionally, but because they don't have the tools of Iman, because they don't have the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan is taking them this way and that way. Right? This is one of the reasons, by the way, you need to think about it. Why Allah says, don't take the kuffar as your awliya. Awliya means your close advisor. It doesn't mean you can't have friends. Of course, you can have non-Muslim friends. But it means the person who you always go to for advice. Why? Does that mean necessarily that this person hates you? No. This person may love you. They may love you a lot. But... The problem is, when they give you advice, what will that advice be based upon? The book of Allah? The sunnah of the Prophet wasallam? No. So they may love you and they may care for you, but even they will misguide you, not even intentionally, because they don't know what is guidance themselves. Do you understand? So this is because they are from... The people who are baleen, they're gone astray. Or maybe they just don't know. They don't even know or understand what is the guidance. Right? So like the brother said, I was giving the brother some advice, some medical advice, not medical advice, you know, he has a stomach problem. So I said, oh, take some honey and have some. And the brother said, are you a doctor? I don't think he meant it in a bad way. It's a fair enough question. Right? I mean, and I guess it's fine handing out advice for a stomach ache, but you know what, if you had cancer or you needed open heart surgery or something like that, something a bit more serious, or most of us even with some mild ailments, we don't just go asking the local gazook, right? Or the local whoever or whatever. We want the best opinion, right? We want to be guided by knowledge. So this is even more so with these spiritual matters. We need the knowledge and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now this person has become Muslim. They've accepted some basic truths. The worst thing you can do now is just leave them because now straight away, shaitan already came in person. When you are trying to give that person shahada, shaitan came himself to try and dissuade this person or these people from becoming Muslim. Do you think now they've taken the shahada, he's going to leave them alone? Or do you think he's going to launch a full-scale, all full-out attack to try and get this person away from Islam while their knowledge is still weak, while their yakin is still weak? What do you think? Which one do you think? Yes, definitely. 
definitely. Actually, that was my experience. My personal experience is when I became Muslim, alhamdulillah. Of course, in some ways, you are connecting with Allah in a way you never have before. It's very deep, it's very profound, it's very exciting, it's new. But on the other hand, all of these questions, these things are coming to your head. You know, I remember sometimes I used to be praying, all the noise in my head and the voices in my head and the things that I couldn't even sometimes tell the difference between what I was saying in my prayer and all these, you know, this a full-on scale attack. I would be making sajda and I would see images of idols and I would think to myself, am I prostrating before idols now or am I prostrating before Allah? That's how shaitan is trying to confuse me. So I'm sure if this is my experience, many other people get experience like that. Shaitan comes and whispers to them to confuse them about making wudu or about so many things. So this is a very important time. This is not the time to leave this person. Now the person needs, what do you think? What do you think this new Muslim is going to need, brothers? Guidance. Guidance. And who do you think is going to be primarily responsible for that? The one who gives him shahada. The one who gives him shahada. Right? So, brothers and brothers and sisters listening at home, Alhamdulillah, I know a lot of you have been motivated so far to give dawah. Some of you have already started to give dawah. Alhamdulillah, I'm sure. And some of you have already taken shahadas. Right? So, I don't want to put Someone on the spot, but I'm going to have to put someone on the spot. Sadiq, I want to know. MashaAllah, after you learned go rap and you took shahada from those two guys, what's happened to them now? I have given Quran and some uh, biography of Prophet Muhammad So you've given them a Quran. Uh, and the and... Of biography of Prophet Muhammad. Okay. Now, again, just imagine a newborn baby. Yeah. The baby's just born. You give it a bottle of milk. Right, and you know, some water. There you say, go on, off you go. Do you think that's really enough? No. Okay. Do you have their telephone number? Yes. Okay. Have you phoned them? Not yet. I'll go and meet again today evening. Huh? I'll go and meet evening. You've got a meeting with them today. Excellent. That's good. See, that's good. So that's what I wanted to hear and I'm very happy to hear that, mashallah. Brothers and sisters, we're going to have to bring it to a close now, but there will be more Dao Workshop episodes coming. Don't forget to watch it, inshallah. <laughs>